Hi everyone, it's Rio Clouting. In today's session, I'm going to take you through and demonstrate Group Right Back with Microsoft Entra Cloud Sync, which is currently in public preview. With the release of the new provisioning agent ending 137.0, we're now able to perform Group Right Back using Entra Cloud Sync. Previously, in public preview, we were able to use Group Right Back v2 within Microsoft Entra Connect Sync, which will be deprecated by 30th of June 2024. And there are migration guides listed within the Microsoft Learn content, which I'll link within the description. So let's get to it. So if we access entra.microsoft.com, and it will take us to our dashboard in which we want to scroll down the left hand service pane to where we see hybrid management. We want to select Entra Connect which will display the two sync methods, either through Entra Cloud Sync, which is where we're gonna be adopting and using the new um, group right back feature. And we have Legacy Connect Sync, which like I said, the, um, the group right back V2 will be deprecated by 30 for June, uh, 2024. But this one, we want to use Cloud Sync. So we're gonna click Cloud Sync, and this will take, it to, take us to our configuration pane, where we'll see the listed agents installed on our domain controllers, which have line of sight into our um, organization. So we can see here, we've got one agent um, installed on a uh, particular server. The server does have to be 2016 and above. So that's Windows Server 2016. Um, like I said, you do need to have the hybrid administrator role. Okay, and only cloud security groups are supported from syncing from Entra ID to on premise. So, if I was to create a new configuration, if I was to do this from scratch, of course, I've already got an existing configuration in place which is showing it in a healthy state. I, I now have two options Active Directory to Microsoft Entra ID sync, which is our legacy way of syncing up users, groups, um, uh, particular resources from on premise to the cloud. But of course, there's always been that stipulation where maybe we want the source of authority to be Entra or Microsoft itself online. Um, how can we sync backwards? Well, with this new ability, we can, which is where we're going to select Microsoft Entra ID to AD sync. So if I select this, this will give us an option to install the provision agent on a particular domain server or a listed server with line of sight into um, your Active Directory domains and uh, users. So if we click here, it will give us an option to download the, the on-premise agent. You just install that on the, the server 2016 upwards. Of course, I've done this to save time, which I've already installed a provision agent on the particular domain controller uh, called nyc-dc1, technical uh, WCC technical presales.microsoft.com. Here's the external IP address and the status is active. So if I was to navigate to the domain controller, you can see I've got legacy Azure AD Connect installed or Entra Connect now called, okay? and the Microsoft Entra Provision Agent Wizard, which is the agent here we can download. Um, a key thing to take away from this piece is we can sync identities up, okay, and groups up while using the Entra Cloud Sync. So we can use both Azure AD Connect and the Entra Provisioning Wizard um, in coexistence with one another. That's not a problem. So if I was to go back to Entra itself and come out of here. OK, uh, we've already created the, the, the connection piece between Entra and AD. As I said, I've done this before. Um, we then want to click into WCC technical presales.microsoft.com in which will take us to our overview pane for the connection piece where it's, it's listing our domain and the configuration status. When you do create the connection piece between Entra and on premise, you need to enable it as well. OK. Here we've got a feed, so I can say, okay, I've got one agent. Okay, you may have more for redundancy uh, reasons. Uh, the configuration status is enabled, like I said, you need to enable it. The sync um, interval is just a delta sync. It syncs every 20 minutes. We can provision on demand if needs be, but there is a limit of um, up to five users per uh, security group we can sync down uh, to Active Directory domain uh, services. And we've got the group provision to AD sync errors here. So kind of the, the service health per se. So we do have some quick links on the bottom where we can download additional agents and we can provision on demand, but also we can provision on demand here. Um, the same principle applies. Um, and we've got the manage section. The manage section is very important because we need to go to manage to be able to define what groups are being synced, okay, from Entra to AD domain services and where to. So first things first, you've got the group scope. So we can sync all security groups within our given organization or selected security groups. In this instance, I've selected two objects, which are two security groups one called Entra Cloud Sync and one called Entra Group Test. 
The entry clausing has one member in, and that member is a hybrid member where in which they're being synced from on-premise to the cloud. We can only populate um, individuals or identities into given security groups which have been synced from enter ID to on-premise if they're a hybrid identity because the object needs to exist on-premise. If they're cloud only, they won't propagate into the on-premise AD group uh, because the object does not exist and we'll see that in practice in a second. So if I go back, I've selected the two groups and I can see the target container. Okay, so in here we're just using the default target container, which is um, users or all users. We've got a domain controller there, which is WCC technical pre sales and the, the prefix. We've got some mapping types here, which is constant, direct, non, or expression, and we can expand upon those um, if needs be. But really, I'm just using the out of box mapping. So if I come back, um, so what we said here is, okay, we're syncing down these two objects, they're, they're security groups, this is where we're going to be syncing them to, okay, um, and uh, and we've got the list of groups in scope here with the object ID. What you'll see, when the groups are synced to on-premise AD, they will have um, some of the object ID string uh, appended to the group name, uh, that's because we need to amend the attribute mapping moving forward. Uh, but before we get to that, we do have attribute scope filters, which is more around, okay, if we select all security groups, but we want to exclude a, a particular security group from the, the, the sync synchronization process, then we can do by adding a, uh, an attributes um, uh, filter here. Okay, just like we see in dynamic membership rules or anything um, dynamically, uh, we can create a membership rule to, to exclude. But we've got the attribute map in here where we got the um, uh, the name, okay, which is being appended, um, as well as the uh, object ID I said here, okay, which is listed. So when we go to my domain controller in a second, um, you will see that the, the object ID is appended to the given name, but the given name is only uh, intra, uh, intra group or intra group test. Um, if you do start amending these attributes at all um, and you get into a, to a situation where okay um, this is not working uh, you can restore the default mappings here and you can edit and delete existing ones as well okay so just think of it i've, I've synced these i've synced these groups they've went through that 20 minute uh, sync interval we then can now go to the domain controller domain controller one where i've got my provision agent i've got active directory domain services so if i go to windows server and go to tools and click Active Directory Users and Computers. It will take me to my uh, management tool. Where I've got that user OU. So where I uh, scoped in scoping filters, okay, I want it to go to the user um, uh, container. Okay, this is the user container. And you can see those two groups listed I scoped earlier. Okay, uh, so if I click Enter Cloud Sync, you will see there's one member in here called AVD Admin, and this is a synced user. So like I said, the, the identities need to be hybrid because they need to exist in the first place on premise to be able to populate in the group. Um, but if I click, click Enter Group Test, there's actually two members in this group on, in the cloud, but there's no members on-prem because these objects don't exist. So if I was to uh, go here um, and I was to scroll up to groups, all groups, and type in those listed groups we've synced, intra, you can see intra group test and intra cloud sync. So this one has the hybrid member in and a cloud user. So this, this user in particular is hybrid and we can see that by the source of authority in, in properties. There we go, on-premise sync enabled, yes. Um, but if we go back one and we go to Rio and we go to properties, um, the issue user is not synced, thus does not show in the, um, the, the group on-premise. Okay, um, it is good to highlight you do need an enter ID P1 for, for, for this to, to, to work and to use this feature. And like I said, um, this, this, this works with both Entry Connect and Cloud Sync uh, coexistence with one another. And you can uh, sync down uh, both dynamic and static groups um, to on premise. Just to make sure you've got, you, you're have got you aware of that dependency in terms of the, the hybrid users and cloud only users. Okay. Um, but one more thing, if we were back to go back into uh, Cloud Sync, um, we've also got uh, under uh, Hybrid Management, Entry Connect, Cloud Sync, uh, click on to the configuration. We've got the provision logs as well, where we can see what's going on. 
Um, so you will see some skip processes here where either it's been synced prior or um, the user does not exist on premise. OK, but if we were to look at one of the success um, audits, you can see the process flow in which it's going through. So importing the group from Microsoft Enter ID, match the group between Enter ID and Active Directory. Some of the groups in scope, um, i.e. determined based on my scoping filters, and then provision the groups um, in the, the given directory or OU we've, we've specified. Uh, we've also got general order logs here for any amendments within the given service. Uh, but like I said, you've got a lot of flexibility here in terms of uh, syncing those groups from, from cloud to, to on-premise. It is worth noting that, of course, um, Entry Connect does have a lot more functionality over the, the likes of Cloud Sync. But once again, you've got a lot of option to have it in coexistence mode, so that's not a problem. And I think really the main takeaway from this video is the, you've, you've now amended the source authority to cloud rather than on-premise for these particular groups. So if you are going to be managing these groups moving forward, then uh, best case is to, to manage the members and uh, or the users uh, with an enter ID moving forward rather than on-premise AD. If you start messing around with the users on-premise AD and start deleting them and removing them from particular groups, um, then there will be a conflict of interest in terms of identities and, and you'll have a very big tidy up session to, to complete. But like I said, there is a migration guide to move you from V2 version to the new Entry Cloud Sync. Um, any questions, more than happy to, to, to answer. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's me. Um, and like I said, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.